So I'm not a, uh, a mountaineer or a poet, um, but I am a product manager. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about innovation and just talk a little bit before we get to the most important thing, which is a demonstration of some of the products. Some of you know them deeply, as, probably as deeply as I do, uh, from a user perspective, and some of you don't. So we're going to try to show you as much as we can in a short period of time. But let's talk about innovation. That's what brings us here today, right, in more ways than one for this event, of course, but I think all of you are probably in the positions you're in because you value innovation and you enjoy potentially bringing innovation to people who can get their work done better, people that can actually change things. And of course, I do this a lot for private sector and um, you know, talk to so many customers in the private sector, but I feel sometimes that it's even more important for your organizations. It really makes a difference when people are more productive and get things done more effectively. So innovation uh, is very important to Google as well. Um, and there's cycles of innovation, I think, that actually bring us uh, in the positions you're in to a difficult spot because innovations from yesterday became today's burdens, right? Things that you thought were innovations years ago, they really were. They changed the way people worked and they brought benefits. But those are the things that today are a burden, things that you actually you know, look at trying to you know, support and maintain, and they become sort of the anchors in the ground that are hard to move when things need to change. The flexibility is no longer there because of those innovations. So it's, it's kind of, there's an irony there. And then the innovations of today reach a point of credibility, and that's the cycle, uh, where you almost have to implement them. You know, the demand from the people that are at their desks doing the job or on the road or you know, on some mission, they actually won't accept the fact that they can't get things done as easily at work as they can at home. And there's so many innovations today. It's moving so fast. These cycles are coming faster and faster. But the big cycle, the big um, thing that has changed is it's a platform shift to the cloud, to the web. And that's something that is unavoidable at this point. It's definitely going to happen. So um, I think that's actually the tipping point, that credibility point where you have to actually say, OK, well, not will we do it, but how will we get it done? How will we get it done within regulation, with safety, security, reliability, all the things that you need? And so um, let me just talk a little bit about how, how Google brings products to market. Uh, innovation is not really possible without experimentation. You have to fail. And Allison spoke about failure before success, if you can call getting a few hundred feet from the summit of Everest failure. Um, but it's actually really important to learn and then keep experimenting to get that thing that works, so that innovation. So in 2005, I joined Google to start an experiment. And that experiment was basically a hypothesis that we could reach multi-platform um, capabilities through the browser, that the browser could be a platform for delivering desktop quality apps. And that, for, from, from my perspective, you know, uh, like Amit described, I was a coder, you know, really involved in very old technology at some point in my career. And multi-platform was virtually impossible. So having a browser as the single point of entry onto any platform was really a dream come true. And so our experiment was focused on bringing a spreadsheet product to the web through the browser to prove that browsers could do it. And what we proved, I think, beyond a reasonable doubt was that browsers in 2005 weren't quite ready. They were almost ready. And they actually produced something, the spreadsheet product that we had back then, was actually usable. But it wasn't something that was breakthrough. It was, OK, we can do that. That's great. Like JavaScript is getting better, and browsers are getting better, and, and standards matter, and multi-platform is going to matter, but it's not quite there. But we did one thing that, that, that really changed our direction. And that, as experiments go, changed our hypothesis and where we were going. And that was that we added a feature that put people in the same spreadsheet at the same time. And it was real-time collaboration and team productivity. And all of a sudden, everything changed. And at Google, in, at the end of 2005, the beginning of 2006, the use of our product internally, because we were testing it internally, skyrocketed. All of a sudden, everybody was using the product because they were getting things done faster and more effectively just by sharing information. The spreadsheet was just the canvas. It didn't matter that it was a spreadsheet. They were hardly doing formulas. They were just basically sharing data. But because they could do it at the same time, everybody started using it. And we knew we were onto something different. And what we said basically is that our mission now is not to deliver things through the browser and desktop quality tools. It was about redefining productivity. Productivity now was about team productivity. And the friction that was involved in teams working together in the traditional tools that they were using, the productivity tools, was way too great. And we knew that teams getting work done together was the best way for actually people to get things done together. Uh, together. So redefining productivity became our goal. 
So we actually just kept going. And that's where we um, uh, went with Google Docs. It became, that spreadsheet product became Google Docs. And Google Docs became Google Drive recently, if you've, if you've seen that uh, implementation. So I want to talk about how we bring products to market based on that product. Google Docs became Google Drive mostly because we added one feature, which was upload, the ability to upload other content, not just spreadsheets, presentations, and documents, but anything. And we noticed people were using that feature more than the core. And, and so we said, well, let's add sync. Let's let people sync content so they can get things to the cloud easier. So focusing on the user and understanding what's going to make people more effective is one of the critical factors of how we bring products to market. Building for the web means componentry. We have so many components from the consumer market that actually apply so well to the enterprise or government market and to organizational software. The one example I'll give here, it's pictures of the Eiffel Tower, um, looks irrelevant. But actually, the point is we have a product that might seem silly in the consumer market but fun called Google Goggles, which lets you take a picture of something and recognize what it is by the picture. Now, when you upload images to Google Drive, to Google Apps, basically, you can use that same feature. It's wired together to that component because we built everything for the web that lets you now avoid meta tagging of every single image you upload. It just recognizes what it is by what it is. So if I search for Eiffel Tower across my corpus of thousands and thousands of photos, it'll find me the pictures of the Eiffel Tower because it knows. And then simple and transparent. And that's something that just you'll see pervasive across everything we do and you've heard it before. Simplicity is key to productivity. And it's key to flexibility. And everything we do, we, we try to keep simple, sometimes uh, to a fault. I'm sure a lot of our customers would agree that you know, when you ask for a feature that's complex, we might not be able to deliver that because it, it, it ruins, it, it cancels the simplicity. And that's critical for us. And transparency, so you know where information is and how to get to it. So what we're going to do is actually, well, well, I'll just go through a couple more points. And these are, these are actually points that are, you've heard today, so I don't want to go through them too much. But the most important thing is that we feel we're uniquely positioned to deliver this product to organizations, to government, and to enterprise because of all the things we've done in the consumer space and added on top of it a layer. But those things are security and reliability and scale, most importantly. Those things just come along with what we do at Google. You saw, I think, the most compelling slide that Eric showed today was the picture of his team. That security team, I mean, I interact with them all the time. They are basically my gate to putting products out on the market. But that team is totally focused on the security of your data and of your apps. And that's critical. But reliability and FISMA accreditation, those things really give us the positioning to deliver these products to you as organizations. And rapid innovation is something that you really, you, you can't get innovation when you have to install it and change it every few years. You can't try to install every single machine a new version and expect that you're going to have simplicity and, and productivity. It just doesn't work. So for us, innovation comes along again for the right. And you get new features as you go. But it's not about the features again. It's about the simplicity. It's about not having a burden from the innovations that you introduce. So we're going to go through a scenario here. Um, which is fictitious but real. We've had this, uh, you know, these scenarios actually work through our apps. Organizations are using our apps to do this, but responding to a hurricane is our fictitious scenario. We're going to show you how we use our apps in each, um, in each um, segment of this response. So preparing, planning, coordinating, responding, and recovering using the different apps that are in Google Apps. So I want to introduce um, the person that's going to actually take the hardest role, I think, here today. Uh, climb Everest, do all those things that are risky, but try to give a live demo. Um, Mashad Hari um, will allow us to actually take on this risk today by going through a demonstration in each of these segments. Let's move to that. Now that you scared me, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and try this live demo. So um, I actually have the funnest job in this whole conference, I think, because everybody talks about um, products, and I'm actually going to show you how you can use this. And my team and I, uh, we respond to natural disasters as they come on shore. You can see that this is the first screen that I see every morning. I come here. It, um, I use it for situational awareness because it gives me all the information I need, my email, my RSS suites, everything that I usually want to see in one window. And um, today, I came to work, and one thing I saw is this map. This is showing me how this new hurricane, Hurricane Tony, we named it, is coming on shore and where the projection um, landfall is. 
So I can basically um, look at this and have an idea of what I need to do and how I need to direct my team. The first thing I need to figure out is who among the regional um, forces I need to get engaged with my team. And to do that, I have a little gadget here. This gadget is um, backed by Google um, Search Appliance, where it searches not only uh, my internal intranet information, it also reaches out and looks through the cloud to see what kind of information I have stored in my cloud um, account. So I'm just going to do a search instead of talking and show you how it works. So you can see here that on the left-hand side, I have what we call organic search results. These are private documents, sites, information that my company, my organization holds within our firewall. Nobody else can see this. This is mine. In the on the right-hand side, you can also see that uh, there is a list of documents. These documents are stored in my cloud account. They are accessible to me from any uh, computer that I can log into from. And I can basically um, have the same search box do a full text index search on these documents at the same time that it's searching our intranet. So it brings the two together. And on the top, you can see that it also does what we call a people search. This search looks through a database of people we have and matches my search criteria to what we call their skills or talent or however you name it. But it basically shows me that I have two correspondents that I can rely on. And because the map shows that the storm is moving to North Carolina, I am going to pick Todd as my um, regional correspondent. When you think about the need for speed in a situation like this, a fast search across all of your internal information, that's you know, millions or billions of documents, and the things you've stored in the cloud is really critical. Right. So, um, as you can imagine, I've done this once or twice. It's my job. So um, to make this easier, I'm using another Google product called Google Drive that Jonathan talked about. This is a um, tool that sits on my local machine. And I can use that to drop all of my information. Instead of uploading into the cloud, I can basically copy and paste into folders that I've created in my Google Drive. And it will sync it up to my account on the web. So I can use it as a backup, or I can use it to go in there and then share and collaborate, which I will show you how I'll do that. So for this response, I actually um, have this template where I hold a bunch of documents that I find useful, some information that I want my team to have. And um, I also have a template, which is a Google Doc. So um, simply copy pasting this, I created another folder it's already uploaded to the cloud. So I can go back to my account on the web. And here's the folder. So the documents that I am changing, whether I'm changing it on my local machine or I'm changing it in my cloud, they all stay synced up. So if I disconnect and go to the coffee shop and I can't connect, I can actually work offline on documents that are in my machine. Now, I have also, the most important part of this that I want to mention is the share button here. I cannot do this by myself. I have a team of people that help me. And you've heard about a lot of um, speakers today talk about the power of collaboration and what Google brings to the table. Using this one simple button, I can go in there and share this document and basically this whole folder with uh, people that are going to help me. I have a group. National Disaster Relief Team, these are my core people. They always help me. So I just put them in a group, and I share everything with them. Todd is specifically for North Carolina, so I added him to this so he can also share and view what we're doing here. Now, if I open this document, which is my planning document, you can see that my hardworking team is already at work. If I look at this, you can see that there is a bunch of people doing my job for me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so I can get credit for this fast approving document coming together. And um, I can follow and see what they're doing. If um, I see that they're doing something wrong, spelling Tony incorrectly, I can go here and quickly do a group chat and tell them that I need this differently. But they're doing a great job. I'm not going to disturb them. Um, 
So I'm rolling down to see what else in this um, document I need to do. Wow. Somebody actually imported the map into this. Thank you. Um, evacuation routes. I don't know much about evacuation routes in um, North Carolina. So I'm going to use what we call a research tool within this document. Note that I'm not going to Google searching and coming back. I'm actually searching within my document, and I'm going to look for James City, which uh, from the map looked like it was the closest city to where the hurricane is going to actually hit. Now, note here that not only is this showing the city in the map to me, it's also giving me on the right-hand side, it's also giving me some really key information about the city, the population, what's going on in that region. So I can quickly get some ideas about what I need to prepare for. If it's a large town, if it's a small town. This is useful, so I'm just going to insert this map in here as well. Oops. And then I'm also going to look for other information. I want to see evacuation routes. So I'm just going to do this and look for sites and information that's available online. So this is going to the internet and bringing information to me real time. So um, here I can actually click here and have a preview of the site. I don't have to act, leave and come back. I can see what the site has to offer. And if I find that useful, I could click and add the link here, just like that. Now, this is all great, but realistically, I need more up-to-date information, and I need to bring some of my team in to help me out. I have a um, group of geoscientists that help me analyze the geoinformation, so I am going to start a hangout with my team. And um, it's already started. You can see that some of them are already hanging out without me. but. Um, they're going to help me. And you can see that Todd, who is my regional officer, is already deployed. He's actually in the airport. He insisted in doing this in the airport. So can you turn around and show us? Yeah. <laughs> He's in DCA. Thank you, Todd. And um, Mike is my geospecialist. He's already in the bunker. You can see it's very dark around him. Uh, so he's going to help me, and he's going to bring the geo information to the team. So, Mike, what can you tell us about what we need to know about Tony? Hey, Mashad. <clears throat> How's it going? We're um, down here in the bunker at the Emergency Response Center, and um, we have some updates on the geospatial stuff and uh, some of the storm damage. So um, in order for me to show that to you, uh, let me just use the Google Hangout screen share function so I can just uh, share my screen with you so you'll see what I'm looking at. So um, what you see here is uh, we took a 40 gig cache of data before we left so that no matter whether we had internet or power, we'd have all this Google Earth data. So we've been working with data at about this level. We have you know, like one meter imagery and so we've been following the storm and trying to track and see um, you know, what kind of areas would be damaged. And, uh, but now that the storm is over, we've been able to fly some airplanes out over the region. And uh, they've come back with a lot of imagery. So these are all of the new images that we've received uh, from, this, from the airplane that just landed. And so we need to share this out with the team. So, so far, I've taken all of this data and uploaded it to Google Maps Engine. And this is a pretty straightforward process. Just with the browser, we do upload map data, and it comes right off of our hard drive up into the cloud. And here's one of the images right here, but there were hundreds of images. So we uploaded all of them and put them into a single map. So here we have a number of the different images down here all in a single layer. And I've been able to share that out with our team. Uh, and what your team should now be able to see is you should be able to see the same data in Google Earth. You should be able to see it in Google Maps. And if you have people using other geospatial products, um, you can actually share this link out with them, and they'd be able to see the data in a uh, web map service. But if we go to the Google Maps portion of it, um, you can see that we have the Google data uh, underneath 
the brand new imagery that we just pulled off the airplane. So we've been working with uh, Google Earth down here um, with this brand new data, and we've been marking a bunch of the areas that look like they've been damaged, and we've been posting some of those screenshots up to Google Plus. So you should be able to log into Google Plus and see some of the screenshots that people will be able to use. Um, but in the meantime, you can also use this map, and you can zoom all the way down into areas uh, that have been damaged. And in this case, you can see um, we can see what did it look like before. This is the Google data that was already in Google Maps before the hurricane. And now we can see these areas that have been just completely washed out. So we're marking these areas on the map with Google Earth and updating and uploading the data. So your whole team should be able to uh, use this data. Um, so maybe uh, if you have some people out in the field or some teams out in those areas, uh, you can assign them to go and you know, see what they can do to, to help with these areas. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, this looks bad. We need to send somebody. Thankfully, Todd was just dispatched. So um, if he travels in the speed of light, he'll be there by now. So let's see. OK, thank you very much. Sure. And um, just so you guys believe it, we have people here in the auditorium that have joined us um, on the Hangout as well. Bill is up there. Those guys are. Which so, explains why the bunker is not soundproof, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the bunker, you, know, you need a new bunker. OK, so um, now that we see, um, and the, during this presentation, we went from it was going to happen, and now the storm has happened, and the damage has been done. So what we will do is um, we use another Google product called Coordinate to um, dispatch somebody into the field and um, get this checked out to see how bad the road is and what we need to do. So um, this product will shortly be released, coordinate, and um, you can see that Google is using what we have today. We all have a geolocator on our phones, and this little application that is going to be on your phone helps the dispatchers locate every team member on a map. So you can see that I can see all of my team. Todd is already in North Carolina. So I can then use the application to go in and assign the job of going and checking out the route that was washed out. And then he, in turn, um, can report back to me. And you can see that um, from this screen, I can also start one of these Hangouts. So I can immediately get connected to my coworker and see where he is and if he can accept this job. And um, I can also share imagery with him if he needs to. Now, once I assign the job to him, what he will see on his mobile phone is this um, view where he can accept or reject the job. Hopefully, he'll accept it. But um, if he's too busy or if he can't do it, he can also reject. But the idea is that once he re gets this job and completes it and uh, reviews, how the road looks, he can then report back, and I will see it in that same coordinate. So it makes this very, very easy for me. That's great. I think this is all about, again, productivity, simplicity, and flexibility. It's perfect for this kind of situation, right? Giving you situational awareness across all of these things requires speed, right? And it really right. is a factor of life or death. All right. So um, with that, we're going to, um, since we're talking about mobile users, what I wanted to also show you is some of the capabilities, because we have been talking about um, connectivity and access from anywhere, any device. So um, again, to make you believers, we have a tablet here. And um, this is the document that we have all been working on and um, changing. And you can see that the map that I accidentally put on the title shows up. So this is what my coworkers that are in the field We'll see. They'll be able to join the conversation. Thank you, Sean. So um, you can see that as the fixes are going on, as people are changing the documents, the field workers can also participate. Now, it's harder to type on these um, devices, but they can at least see what's going on. And they can always be viewing the latest and the greatest document. And of course, they could also use voice control, which is part of any Android yes. device. Exactly, yes. So um, if you're driving or if you're <laughs> mobile, you should use that. Another thing that um, is also very cool is the same uh, map that Mike was just talking about, the information that he gathered and then uploaded into Google Map Engine is also available via 
any browser that you have access to in any of these mobile devices. And um, this is an interactive device and interactive um, map, so I could, has a little lag. But you can see that I have layers that I can turn on and off. I can go to points that are uploaded. And um, it basically gives the mobile user the same capabilities as a laptop user or somebody who is sitting in an office. And it, it always gives them the latest and the greatest technology. That's great. OK. Right, Thank you. So this is the, um, really uh, the example of end to end. But it's one example. It's, you know, this is a big one. But when you think about something like Wikipedia, and we were talking about trends in the market, you take that capability of crowdsourcing information and pull it down to every task, every team, every project, every product, everything you do, and it, and it really creates extreme productivity. So through the phases of this disaster planning and preparation and recovery, we saw how the apps can really um, provide productivity, simplicity, and, and um, immediate attention. So this is something I think you can take these tools, apps from end to end, all the componentry of Google behind it, and employ these tools and give them to your teams so that they can be the most productive and flexible. Thank you.